The way that can be told of is not an unvarying way. The names that can be named are not unvarying names. It was from the nameless that heaven and earth sprang. The named is but the mother of that that rears the 10,000 creatures, each after its kind. Truly, only he that rids himself forever of desire can see the secret essences. He that has never rid himself of desire can only see the outcomes. These two things issued from the same mold, but nevertheless are different in name. The same mold we can but call the mystery, or rather the darker than any mystery, the doorway whence issued all secret essences. That's the first chapter of the Tao Te Ching translated by Arthur Whaley. Hi, this is Sarah Russell. I'm your microdose host here with your weekly mood boost and tools for embodied change. And today I attempt to talk about that thing that can't really be talked about, the Tao, as we explore together, what is Taoism? That first line of the Tao Te Ching holds so much of what I love about Taoism, holds so much of the mystery. The way that can be told of is not an unvarying way. The names that can be named are not unvarying names. And it's this idea that the Tao, that's the real Tao, can't actually be talked about. We can't actually put a label on something that's so immense, so mysterious, holds so much of the unknown. And yet we try to do it anyway, because even trying to get close to that essential mystery is so satisfying and so rewarding. But in the same way that when we talk about something like a tree and by giving it the label of tree, we've compartmentalized it in some way, right? We've put it into a box where we can kind of sort of understand what it is, but the word tree doesn't hold all of the beautiful, beautiful immensity of actually what it means to be a tree. And we don't even know fully what it means to be a tree, right? Because we're not having that experience in these human bodies. So that first line of the Tao Te Ching really points to this tremendous mystery about where we're just doing the best that we can as we try to figure out what this incredible cosmic mystery is. Now, Tao means the way, the way of what, right? It's the way of nature, it's the way of the universe, the way of cosmos, the way of source. Um, it's also known as the path. So as we're engaging in Taoism, we're trying to find the path, the path of nature, um, the path where we are in alignment and in harmony with the world around us in some way. And the Tao Te Ching translates to the way and its power. So Tao is the way and Te, Day, um, is the power part of that. And the person who is ru rumored or reputed to have written this is the famous ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, whose name sometimes translates to old master. I've also heard him referred to as the wise child, and he is the founder of philosophical Taoism. So today we're really talking about philosophical Taoism, not religious Taoism. That's another topic, and I identify as a philosophical Taoist rather than a religious Taoist. So the legend goes that Lao Tzu was riding off into the desert in order to die when a gatekeeper stopped him somewhere in northwestern China and asked him to please write down all of his wisdom so that it would be preserved for future generations. And Lao Tzu is a contemporary, was a contemporary of Confucius. And despite the huge differences between them sometimes, they also had some things in common. And some of the things that Lao Tzu and Confucius had in common was they really respected nature. And part of respecting nature meant that they respected human nature. So you're not going to find the Christian idea of original sin in Confucius and Lao Tzu's writings because they really believed in the inherent goodness of humans. And that if we could just clear all of the clutter out of the way, we could get back to our true natures, we could get back to the way which was being in harmony with nature, being in harmony with all of life force energy. So they did have some distinctions between the two of them, however, whereas Confucius really uplifted the ideals of duty and discipline and obedience, the Taoists were a little bit more radical. They were a little bit more subversive. They were a little bit more counterculture. And one of the big ways that they enacted their subversion was through this principle of Wu Wei, which is non-action or not doing. And this in no way implies a kind of idleness, but rather this kind of waiting for right action 
to arise. It's more of a, it's non-action, but it's more of an effortless action rather than not doing anything at all. And this concept is beautifully described in chapter 15 of the Tao Te Ching. Do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? So this idea of non-action or doing by not doing is really about waiting for right action to arise and then not using any kind of force. So we're not using physical or mechanical force. We're also not using any kind of emotional or physical force. And part of the reason for that, in order to be in harmony with nature, yes, but also because using force is incredibly depleting. It's incredibly draining. So we're actually wasting our chi, also known as our life force energy, when we're trying to force something, when we're trying to make something happen. When there's this kind of contrived activity that we're engaging in in order to force an outcome. That's not what Taoism is about. That's not what Wu Wei is about. It's really about finding what the path is and then flowing with it. And I think about this in terms of push hands or even Aikido, where we're redirecting the energy. We're flowing with the energy. Um, there's this beautiful quote that some of you may have heard me say before, but it's that like, when is it time to be the boulder that splits the stream? And when is it time to be the leaf that floats down the stream? And both of those are options in the, with the way, with the path, with the Tao, but it's really figuring out like, what's the right action in this particular moment, knowing that that changes across context. And speaking of changing across context, a conversation about Taoism wouldn't be complete if we didn't talk about yin and yang. And yin and yang are held by the container of the tai chi. And that tai chi is really important because that's the whole where we're seeing with the yin and yang, the dark and the light, there's this idea of opposites, but the tai chi is what unifies them, right? It has this common through line. And even within the yin, where we have the dark, there's that drop of yang, there's that little drop of light. And within the yang, all of that light, there's that little drop of dark or that little drop of yin. That's a really important piece of this yin-yang Taoist cosmology because these supposed opposites that you would think are contrary to each other, that are on complete opposite ends of the pole, are actually complements. They complement each other, they're interconnected, and they're interdependent. And one of my favorite analogies for this is this idea of the sunny and the shady side of the hill. So it would be really easy to look at the sunny side of the hill and go, oh, that's yang, and look at the shady side of the hill and go, oh, that's yin. But we know as the sun moves across the cosmos that the sunny side of the hill is eventually going to become the shady side of the hill, and the shady side of the hill is going to become the sunny side of the hill. And so they're interconnected. They have this interplay with each other. They're dependent on one another, and they change in relationship to each other. And again, being in relationship is part of that being in harmony with nature, being in harmony with the cosmos. So if you think about the moon, it would be really easy to give this oversimpli oversimplified, reductive interpretation of like, oh, the moon is yin and the sun is yang. But again, like we want to hold more complexity than that. So the moon is yin when and in relationship to what? in relationship to the earth, in relationship to the ocean, in relationship to the night. And if we think about the moon, right, it waxes approaching its full yang until it's in its fullness, the full moon. And then what happens when it reaches full yang? Then that yang starts changing as it starts waning, going to the new moon, going to the dark moon, and then it's at its full yin point. And we see this with the ocean as well. So at high tide, we've got all yang energy. And as soon as it hits its maximum yang, then immediately it starts returning to a more yin state as it goes to its low tide where it's all yin. So yin and yang are in relationship to each other. They're interconnected and they depend on one another and the context really matters. We talked about Lao Tzu. We also need to talk about Chuang Tzu. Chuang Tzu was also a famous, brilliant, important ancient Chinese philosopher that greatly contributed to the foundation of Taoism. And they wrote this lovely tale, which I'll read to you now. It's called Dreaming I Was a Butterfly. Once upon a time, I, Chuang Tzu, dreamt I was a butterfly, fluttering hither and thither, to all intents and purposes a butterfly. I was conscious only of my happiness as a butterfly, unaware that I was Chuang Tzu. Soon I awakened, and there I was, veritably myself again. 
Now, I do not know whether I was then a man dreaming I was a butterfly or whether I am now a butterfly dreaming I am a man. Between a man and a butterfly, there is necessarily a distinction. The transition is called the transformation of material things. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or anywhere else where you listen to your podcast. Also check out trendswithbenefits.com for all of our written work and to sign up for our weekly newsletter. And if you have a relationship question you would like answered on this podcast, please send us a voice memo to podcast at mudwtr.com. I would love you. I would love to give you some free support. So if you're struggling with something or you have curiosity about something, let's, let's explore it together on this podcast. That would make me really happy to get to offer that to you. Whether you are a human or a butterfly, awake or dreaming, I hope you find peace, pleasure, and your path.